Don't lie to me, okay? Have you ever used songs as a negotiation tool? I mean, telling students that if they behaved well, you would bring a song activity in next class. Or have you ever used songs just to fill in the time at the end of the lesson? Well, I certainly have done both, but are these the best uses for songs in an English classroom? I'm Rubens Zareja, one of your Pavilion LT vloggers, and in our 2023 video series we are investigating different resources we can use to make our lessons more effective, engaging and fun. And in this video I'll talk to you about five ways in which you can use songs in your lessons, but with a purpose. Do you want to know how? So come with me. I don't know about you, but I still remember the magic that happened the first time my English teacher used a song in a class. It was a very popular song at the time, but I had no idea what he talked about really. And after the lesson, I was able to sing it confidently and really impress my friends. I'm not telling you what the song is because that would give away my age, so let's just say that back then it wasn't as easy to have access to lyrics of the songs we heard on the radio. Nowadays, however, students can easily just Google the lyrics. But does that mean that the magic is gone? Of course not. There are many other ways the songs can enhance the learning process. So let's cut to the chase. Tip number one, go beyond the gap fill. When we talk about songs in classrooms, the first thing that springs to mind is a straightforward gap fill activity. Students are given a handout with gap lyrics and listen to the songs to identify the missing words or expressions. Nothing wrong with the activity itself, but it's kind of predictable and overused, isn't it? There are many things that can be done with songs. They can help set the topic of the lesson during the leading, they can be used for listening practice, the lyrics can be used for reading practice, and they can provide a context to present a target language in, and even serve as prompt for discussion. Here are some ideas of different types of activities that you can use the songs in. Guess the artist, lyric analysis, jumbled lyrics, music video analysis, debate and discussion of controversial songs, comparing and contrasting different covers of the same song, and writing song reviews. Remember that it can sometimes be harder for students to understand language that's being sung rather than spoken, and the songs often include lots of metaphor, reference to cultural elements that students are not familiar with, and slang or language that students are less frequently exposed to. So don't just play the song and expect students to understand everything. Make sure you prepare students for dealing with the song by activating their background knowledge, checking understanding of tasks, questions, and grading the tasks appropriately. Tip number two, let students choose. Cool as we may be, chances are we're always a few steps behind our teenage students in terms of the latest trends in music. And even when it comes to adult students, music tastes are so varied that whichever song we choose, we're not likely to please everyone. Some groups might want to explore new genres. Some may want to focus on the lyrics of songs they are familiar with. Allowing students to choose the song, the artist, or the type of activity can be a good way to ensure that all students are on board. According to Cat Robb, in a fascinating article in the latest edition of Modern English Teacher called Power to the Learner, one way to increase active interaction of teens and young adults is to empower learners by offering them choices and encouraging them to make decisions themselves regarding activity options and homework tasks. This is known as learner agency, and it is intended to help them become more active within the lesson. Mind you, getting a larger group of students to agree on something can be tricky, especially when there are so many options available. But you can get a similar amount of buy-in if you maintain the power to choose but limit the number of options available. Tip number three, get students to use their voice. As a teenager studying English, singing pop songs was probably my biggest English practice opportunity. I'd spend a lot of time singing along to my favorite tunes, and that certainly helped me get accustomed to the sounds of the English language. Songs are an important learning tool in our first language even, and they go beyond pop music. Nursery rhymes, chants, jingles, etc. are all around us as we grow up, and they are part of the process of speech development and language acquisition. And they also have their place in the EFL or ESL classroom, where they can encourage valuable practice. Eric Nikkeis wrote an interesting piece for Modern English Teacher on drills. Some of the advantages of using drills that he puts forward could easily be transferred to the use of songs. According to him, learners may gain confidence on hearing their classmates and may eventually feel like joining in. They strengthen the physical aspects of fluency. 
At low levels, learners still need to get used to the sounds of English and need to get the right muscles to work properly. Learners need to be taught to feel the articulators involved, what is happening with the tongue and the lips. Songs offer us a meaningful and fun reason to repeat the same sentences over and over, almost without noticing that we are practicing the pronunciation of the words we are singing. In the karaoke day can be a fun way to celebrate the end of the term, break the ice with new students, or just spend some fun time together. Tip number four, get students to create songs. We usually see ourselves in the receptive end of music and songs, but a lot of learning and fun can come from students becoming songwriters. There are great benefits in allowing students to write their own songs. They will have to think carefully about the language they will use, about metric and sentence stress, and will also be able to express themselves, which can be really empowering. I know, I know, not all students have a natural talent for writing music and lyrics, and this can be an intimidating prospect. But check out this strategy that Gareth Davies uses to encourage storytelling and free writing in his, with his students. He says that, Students might claim that they don't have the imagination or the words to write creatively in English. For this reason, it is good to take a gradual approach to writing. Existing stories can often be used as a catalyst to writing. The first time I use a story with my class, I ask students to rewrite it in a new setting or with a changed lead character. This allows them to be creative, but gives them the security of the existing story structure. The same approach can be used for writing lyrics to a song. Students can use existing songs and rewrite the lyrics, like a parody. If you feel this is still a step too far for your students, you can get them to ask AI tools like ChatGPT to create songs in the style of their favorite artists. There are even AI tools to make the song sound like it was recorded by the real artist and celebrity. That can be fun for sure. Tip number five, go beyond the song itself. We've already covered a number of different things we can do with songs themselves, but there are many other ways we can use songs as a springboard to deeper discussions that encourage higher-order thinking. According to Sabrina Doré, a well-chosen song in the ESL classroom offers the learners exposure to authentic English, offering enriching language acquisition opportunities, and at the same time can be used as a medium to introduce students to topics of cultural, social and political importance for which critical thinking comes naturally. Music, like other forms of art, doesn't exist in a vacuum and often reflects the zeitgeist of a specific time and place. Encouraging students to reflect upon the cultural impact of songs that they like, the artist's background and public persona, and even what is or was going on in the world when the song was written, can lead to engaging discussion. This can lead to research into the artist's lives, the history of the music genre, and the culture of the social group that created it. This can be particularly helpful if you teach in a context that adopts project-based learning or CLIO. I hope these tips help you get ideas on how to use songs in lessons and make learning more effective and fun to your learners. I'm pretty sure you have already used songs in lessons, so share your ideas with us in the comment section. And you can also contact me on all social media at whatisdlt. Keep learning and keep teaching. Mm -hmm.